When I was a kid, waking up was easy. Not like now, where it's a whole process of preparing for existence. But when I was 10, I could bounce right out of bed at 6am and get plenty of Pokemon Blue playtime in before school. And sure, I only had to get out of bed because the damn thing had no backlight, but I still have a lot of great memories about that. All of that's to say that when I discovered my friend's childhood Game Boy was completely dead, how could I pass up the opportunity to repair it? Yeah, it's like dead dead. And yes, the batteries are fresh. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised. I always had the impression that these things were kind of indestructible. Then again, there may be a clue hiding within this Game Boy's B button. Check this out. That is definitely not right. And there's usually only one cause for gummed up buttons. I'm thinking that, as kids' belongings often are, it's filled with some sort of... gloop. Gloop that, while mostly innocuous, could have easily corroded some metals inside, which would explain the... deadness. In other words, this dirty boy needs a bath. Well, as we all know, Matt KC stands for Matt Cleanup Crew, so let's get started. First, I want to say I've been wanting to repair this thing since early March, but I learned, much to my dismay, that it uses these proprietary tri-wing screws. I already have screwdrivers for some of Nintendo's other proprietary screws, but somehow I'd gotten this far without ever owning a tri-wing. At the time I made this discovery and bought a tri-wing screwdriver online, the world was a different place. There was no lockdown, just a general lack of available toilet paper. However, as we all know, the situation changed very quickly, and thus this screwdriver was caught up in international shipping limbo for three full months, until it finally arrived about a week ago. In my desperation, I'd even half-heartedly attempted opening this thing with small, flathead screwdrivers, but I really couldn't see a way to do it without stripping the screw and making the problem even worse. There's nothing quite like the real thing. As you can see, these screws just glide out now. There are six screws to remove, four immediately visible, and two underneath the battery cover. Once they're all out, it just kind of pops apart. Not a hard thing to open at all as long as you have the screwdriver you need. Immediately, I noticed this brown glob on the back. At first, I thought it might be some kind of grease, since there's also a little on the volume wheel. But I decided to look at some other Game Boy Color disassemblies, and everyone else's metal shielding was clear. So, assuming this isn't normal, this might be our first appearance of the aforementioned gloop. And just as I had that thought, I saw just how much it had spread to other parts of the back casing. In fact, looking even closer, there were even some tiny ones on the board. If this is all the same stuff, it seems like it was pretty prolific. However, besides those splotches, it's actually, for the most part, remarkably clean. No dust, no dirt, just splotches. It's time to go deeper, which means removing the power switch, IR lens, and display cable, which I use a screwdriver to pull out so it wouldn't get damaged. Next are three suddenly standard Phillips screws. Yeah, after all the trouble of getting a tri-wing screwdriver, you don't even need it anymore once the thing is open. Thanks, Nintendo. Very cool. After that, the board just lift out of the case and... Oh... Oh dear... <laughs> Whatever that gunk was, it just wreaked havoc in here. Okay, it's actually not that bad. Trust me, I've seen a lot worse. But I definitely see corrosion, which supports my theory that the gloop is the culprit. I mean, the worst part is that it's brown, right? I mean, if it was any other color, we could at least rule out... Poopy. Okay, for the record, I'm sure my friend didn't sh** in the Game Boy or anything. It's probably just chocolate or Nutella. Hopefully. But right here, I think we've found suspect number one. This big solder joint here is one of the battery terminals, and it's right next to the B button, which seems to have been ground zero for the gloop infestation. If the batteries aren't making contact, that explains the deadness completely. Well, the good news is I think it can be saved. It should just need a little bit of cleaning, some reflowing, you know, just a little bit of TLC. <laughs> That guy sucks. And off we go! I started doing what I always like to do with controller buttons and gave them a warm, soapy bath. Oof, these are all particularly filthy. Here's that sticky B button again. It's just covered in the stuff. Oh god, it's on my finger! Now, I would give the case plastics a bath as well, but I kind of don't want to mess up the stickers or the adhesive sticking the screen to the front bezel, so I think I'll just give it a wipe down with paper towels. For now though, it's Q-tip time to try to get rid of as much of this splotching as I can. As expected, this stuff comes up pretty easily. Once again, I've dealt with much worse. I think our gloop's biggest crime is just being sticky and, you know, corrosive.
After about 30 minutes, I eventually got as much of it cleaned as I could see. Compared to how it looked before, it's so much better. Also, I'd been keeping the board in the case this whole time, thinking the speaker was glued in or something, but it turns out it too was just stuck in with more gloop. Damn. Now back to the case plastics, and the front is an absolute nightmare. This too was just a bunch of scrubbing with q-tips and paper towels. But eventually it all came off and this was the end result. I guess I'm just lucky that whatever this stuff is, is pretty easy to clean. Now for the back plate, which is thankfully a lot cleaner than the front. Indeed, that shiny metal plate is not supposed to have splotches on it, and they came off as easily as any of the others. But there was a faint yellow mark that didn't seem to clean off at all. I'm gonna say it might have been that way from the factory though. Either way, it's clearly pretty faint and not that big of an issue. Alright, that's pretty much everything cleaned, but it won't work yet until we address these corroded joints. I decided to start with my prime suspect, the battery joint. It had just gone completely black. Here goes. You'll have to forgive the mediocre solder work here. I thought the connector was shaped a little differently, and as you can see, even when I did get it to reflow, I wasn't particularly happy with it. Don't worry, I'll fix this up later. For now, I was curious whether this had actually made any sort of difference. So I used a multimeter and it was picking up continuity between the battery terminal and the solder joint. Unfortunately, no change. Still just as dead as before. And if our solder joint is continuous with the battery, it seems like our problem might go deeper than just this joint. But I wanted to redo it anyway, so I did. I desoldered with solder wick, and the terminal itself actually didn't look so bad. Just a little corrosion on the end, which I scraped off manually. While I was here, I reflowed other pins that were corroded, but less so. And I was clearly so excited, I didn't realize my hand was blocking all of the action. My bad. I did the negative battery terminal, and some of these pins at the bottom for the DC input. This is where you could plug in an external power adapter and run your Game Boy off the mains instead of from batteries. Not sure why you'd want to do that, but you can. The battery traces do seem to pass through this area at the bottom, which I believe is so that the DC input can disconnect the battery power when something is plugged in, in order to prevent damage to the batteries. As such, this seems like our next suspect. These joints are also not great looking because I was kind of rushing just to try stuff, but I'll fix them up later too. After reattaching the positive battery terminal and reflowing all of those, I decided to try it again. And nothing. Still nothing. No LED, no sound, no nothing at all. I was starting to get kind of stumped actually. I was so certain that these were the prime suspects, but they didn't seem to be getting me anywhere. I was particularly concerned that the LED still wasn't lighting up. I felt like if there was any power going through this thing at all, the LED at least should be lit up. Considering it's got a DC input, I was wondering what would happen if we bypassed the battery entirely. The Game Boy's DC input, much like the batteries, brings in 3 volts, so I set this external power supply to that and soldered it directly into the circuit. While it was off, of course. Alright, let's have a look. <gasps> what? Woo! <laughs> Holy sh- It's- it's- it's alive! Just seeing this red LED after all this time was enough to truly blow my mind. I had to plug in the screen to see if it was truly working. <laughs> Look at that! Dude, sex is good and all, but have you ever brought a Game Boy Color back from the dead? This was really good news. Not only is the CPU not fried, this indicates that all of the important components are working absolutely fine. So... Huh. I thought I'd ruled out the battery terminal since I was getting voltage from the batteries from the joints, but maybe I'm being proven wrong here. I know there is still some corrosion around the edge of the pad, but I'd kind of assumed it was inconsequential since the traces didn't seem to go there. Well, under the assumption that the DC input is linked in with the battery terminal, I decided to check for continuity between them. And indeed, I was able to confirm continuity with the negative battery terminal and DC pin, but suspiciously not the positive ones. In fact, the positive battery terminal wasn't continuous with anything. I looked at a schematic somebody had written up. I'll admit I'm not great at reading these, but this is the positive battery terminal. It connects to the circuit shortly before the power switch, which makes sense. Effectively, that makes this the main entry point for power in the Game Boy Color. And as such, the positive pin on the DC plug also connects here, though it also passes through a number of extra components beforehand that I think are for filtering out mains interference. But knowing that the DC plug works flawlessly, we can essentially rule out any of these components being the problem. So what else could be the problem? 
well, nothing really. There's nothing to fail between the positive battery terminal and the circuit that we've already confirmed works. And knowing that the joint itself connects to the battery, well, it has to be the pad, the part that connects this blob of solder to the rest of the PCB. I desoldered everything once again to see if there was anything I could do. The multimeter showed the bare pad was still not continuous with anything. Honestly, it's still hard for me to figure out exactly what's wrong. Even the corrosion around the edge doesn't feel like it should be that much of a problem. My only guess is the corrosion was so bad it ate away at the traces or maybe even underneath the pad, something that I'm obviously failing to see with the naked eye. Well, the first thing I tried was to just blast it with more flux and solder, hoping that something somewhere would reconnect. No dice, and it doesn't look very good at all. I cleaned that solder away too, and tried manually scraping the corrosion off, which worked, but still none of this pad had any continuity with anywhere else on the board. It really does seem like the pad is just broken, and considering I still can't actually see what's wrong, I'm not even sure how I can fix it. So I finally decided, fuck the traces. I don't want to mess with them. If the PCB isn't connecting the battery to the rest of the Game Boy, why don't we do it ourselves? I looked at the schematic again, and that main power entry point where the battery connects in appears to be between two components called EM7 and EM6, and here they are on the board. Evidently, the PCB's traces aren't getting the battery power here when they're supposed to. I checked and there's no continuity between them at all, but we can fix that. I soldered the battery terminal back in and, trying to be as neat as possible, ran a wire from the terminal straight to EM7. I believe that should be correct according to the schematic. Checking now, the pad definitely has continuity to the DC pins and other points of power on the board. It's a good sign. Well, in the moment of truth... Haha! <laughs> we've got a red light! Now I have to admit we would be hearing sound right now except for the fact that I was moving around the board so much that the speaker wires actually broke off. My bad. But no matter, just a simple re-soldering will get that back on track. Do we have sound? Ah, it's like I nursed a puppy back to health. Now, before we get too excited, we should really try a game. And we're coming full circle right back to Pokemon Blue. Uh-oh, corruption. Well, that's actually pretty common, so I will try it again. Huh? Hey, look at that! So far, so good. In fact, everything looks good. Of course, we're still missing buttons. Let's see where they're at. Ah, they've just returned from their weekend at the spa. I'll give them a final wipe down and let them dry. All done. I cannot overstate how much nicer it is to have all this stuff clean, and as always, it's very satisfying to be putting these things back in. Now, before we close everything up, I'm gonna finish my reflowing job. You didn't think I'd leave all these corroded pins like this, did ya? Even though we've confirmed it all works, I'll feel a lot better, and I'm sure you will too, if we can get all these pins looking nice. For each of them, I desoldered what was left, cleaned them all up, and applied some fresh new solder. And here it is now. I think that's not too bad. All that's left is to put it back together and reminisce what it was like being 10 years old once again. So I'm super happy with how successful this restoration and repair has been, from the depths of grimy deadness to clean and fully functional. I hope my friend can get some enjoyment out of it once again, and I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao!